Good morning everyone, Matt Moran here for another bullet vlog. So, uh, today I'm in Carlisle, PA, and I am doing uh, the bullet cruise with the whole bullet club. So it's the Hoondog Performance Group. Uh, they have on the IMBOC forums, the International Mustang Bullet uh, Owners uh, forums, they have a yearly thing where they always do a cruise and uh, do some type of road trip type thing. Last year it was Route 66. This year they bundled it together with the Carlisle Ford Nationals event. And um, so I'm not, I don't have enough time to do the whole show, unfortunately. Uh, I'm just here today for the drive. And so we're going to be driving through Amish country and uh, it should be very cool having, you know, this whole row of all these bullets, you know, from an original like 68 clone to, uh, you know, all the newer ones here, all cruising through the countryside. Should be a very cool, uh, you know, look and also be a lot of fun as well. So let's go head out. I gotta first get some coffee and then I'm gonna pick up a buddy of mine. But before I do that, I have to thank Shell for sponsoring this video. So, uh, you know, they have their new Shell V Power Nitro Plus formulation now, and so it includes smooth glide technology now so that you can have uh, friction protection as well as the normal protection against gunk, corrosion, and wear. And so, um, you know, it's been working great for me. I've been running it here on the Indy road trip I did last weekend, and on the way home from Indy, I actually averaged 28.8 mpg which I was really shocked by that's like as good as my EcoBoost Mustang was getting back in the day so really impressed with uh, the fuel economy here in the bullet it's been very economical actually if you take it easy and just kind of cruise in sixth gear uh, at normal highway speeds this thing does really really well as far as fuel economy goes what's up everybody so I am here with Eric uh, Eric the car guy of course as you know him and uh, you know, he was just in the uh, Indy road trip video that was posted before this one and uh, so yeah he is actually here in Carlisle because he's showing off the awesome Fairmont it's actually one of the featured cars here and so that's uh, a huge honor it's awesome right congrats to you for that huge honor it is it's, it's huge my honor has no bounds <laughs> this is just massive <laughs> Anyway, so we are pulling up here to uh, this hotel where all these bullets are staying for Whoa. the uh, bullet cruise here, and uh, so for sure. it's uh, it's it's pretty wild. Just it's like everywhere. a full clip of bullets. I know. Right here. It's this is crazy. crazy. So yeah, we are going to uh, get registered here and uh, hit the road in just a few minutes. All right, so we are hitting the road here, and uh, I'm we surprised. just left an event in a Mustang. Yeah, these, these guys are all going uh, a little faster than I was expecting, honestly. I'm impressed. Oh, yeah. That's how it's done. <laughs> So I know a lot of you guys have always been saying, you know, you want me to modify my bullet. And so I thought I'd show you guys one that is modified here and uh, we can kind of walk around it a little bit to show you guys some of the cool stuff about it. So you see it's got 20 inch wheels. They're the American racing torque thrust style, but they're aftermarket and you know, the twenties do make a big difference over the 19s on the stock one. I personally prefer the taller sidewall of the 19s, so that's why I keep mine stock. But it is still a very cool look. He's also painted the Brembo. So, you know, they're red on uh, the stock car and this one has black, and it's a nice, nice touch. I think it, that actually does look good. Again, I still prefer the red, but I think it looks really cool still nonetheless. And uh, it's also interesting. So he has the uh, standard like GT aftermarket grill on here instead and remove the unique bullet grill. And so, uh, you know, it's just got those fangs again that you lose on the bullet grill that you usually get with a normal GT. Uh, and it's also lowered, of course, and has a really nice stance to it here. And uh, so yeah, I just thought you guys would find that interesting. Let me know in the comments below whether you like stock or modified better. All right, so this one was just so unique and I just wanted to kind of feature this one as well here. So this is an S197 generation. so like the 2008 Bullet Mustang, but it has this fiberglass like shell over top of it to make it look just like a 68. And the proportions aren't perfect. It doesn't look identical to a 68, but it is very close. It's just kind of been stretched and kind of like a 68 if you had, you know, given it some steroids or something. So it's a little beefier, but it looks very cool. I mean, I just love how they, you know, the, many of the parts look identical from an enormous 68 the hood the headlights the grills a little bit bigger I think but very very close and uh, again it's just kind of crazy how they were able to mold this over 
an 08 uh, body, and uh, so it has you know, the torque thrust wheels. Everything looks very correct. Even one of the things that you don't get with the new cars, you can't have anymore, is these louvers here because it just kills visibility. But it looks so cool to have those on here. The interior is straight out of an 08, and you know, still looks great. And then out back here, you know, uh, it has the only thing that's a little bit off is you have a gas cap because you still have to have that to fit with the new car. Uh, but you still do have the full-on faux gas cap here in the back that um, you know, would be functional if this were you know, a real 68. And again, you have a slightly taller back end here, not quite as slender as you normally get. Um, and that's the only thing, but I just, I love the way they molded all this on here. It's just so unique. It must have taken so much time and work to do that. And that is very, very respectable that someone would go to that much trouble. And I think, uh, I think it actually looks a lot better than an 08, a standard 08 in my opinion. It looks so, so cool. And um, yeah, that is a really cool idea. And so two thumbs up to the person who uh, put in all the, all the sweat and tears to make this a reality. So yeah, we just finished our lunch here at this massive smorgasbord, they call it, which was very filling and very impressive. And uh, so yeah, now we're gonna start the second half of the drive. It's a little more loose than uh, what we get with uh, some other drives I've done in the past, but uh, you know, we've still got some fantastic roads here in Amish country. Awesome amount of bullets here and should be a good time. So part of the time, you know, we've been driving on back roads has been very exciting and, you know, sporty driving. And then a lot of times we're just going slowly through little old school towns and villages, which are also very charming and cool to see. Uh, but the names of these places are very interesting. And I won't say any more than just the names of them and you can take it as you like. Uh, but we uh, were going through, at some point we went through intercourse and we didn't, <laughs> we didn't, we didn't know. even know. We didn't even know. <laughs> but that was one of the places we went through. And then there was also Blue Ball, was a town we went through. That was after intercourse, which I find uh, interesting. Yeah, which it's kind of backwards. And then uh, in addition to that, we literally just went through a place called the Village of Bearville. B-A-R-E-Ville. So um, lots of interesting town names around here. And I would just leave it at that. <laughs> So while we're cruising through these very interestingly named places, uh, I figured that I would uh, let Eric here talk a little bit about his Fairmont. Because if you watch the indie vlog that I did previously, uh, you'll, you know, obviously that car was uh, part of the road trip, and I was talking about how it's you know, a turbo V8, and it's a very cool sleeper, but I didn't have a lot of the details. And so, uh, of course, Eric here knows all the details. He built it from the ground up. And uh, so, yeah, it's turbo V8, but like details of the engine, you know, how much power you make and all that kind of stuff. The engine is a World Products block, it's not a Ford block, oh, okay, uh, cool. That it's a custom racing block, it's a lot thicker, in fact so thick I had to modify my engine mounts in order to get them to bolt up to get it in the car to begin with. But you know, doing a turbo V8 is nothing new, but anyway, displacement came out to uh, 363. Okay. It is a 67 millimeter uh, ceramic belt bearing turbo, which I used to have a different, just regular 70 millimeter turbo with just a bushing. and. The ceramic ball bearing does make a difference. It pulls up way quicker. Nice. Difference, I meant. So it's uh, not too big of a V8 then, just being, you know, what do you say, 363? No, no, it's not. And the boost isn't crazy on it either. I'm, I'm out 7 or 8 PSI is okay. where I'm at. Basically, I built the car as a way to embarrass cocky BMW drivers nice. more than anything else. It also has air conditioning and it has Bluetooth and hands-free stereo, all that stuff. Nice. Suspension mods are... Um, tubular cam member up front with offset control arms so the front wheels are moved forward about three quarters of an inch which sort of displaces the weight of the engine back a little bit which is supposed to improve handling. Uh, also in the back there is a torque arm and a pan hard bar which pretty much locks down it's it's a solid axle in the back but 8.8 .8 rear end 355 gears in the back. Uh, transmission is a TKO 605 speed uh, that I got in the recommendation from Paul Cangiolosi who I built a T5 transmission on my channel with and if there's anything you ever want to know about manual transmission look up Paul's channel uh, Gearbox Nation I think it is or just Gearbox nice. and that guy let's put it this way he designs his own transmission parts and has them built for his kits that he wow. does so I mean he's on that level he's been doing it a long time that's crazy that being said the car is it's I love it because it's got plenty of power. It probably puts about 550 horse at the wheels, somewhere around there. Nice. Uh, torque is amazing, you know, like 622 pound-feet of torque at the crank, at peak torque or whatever, but 
the, you know, it's just like I say, it's meant to be driven on the street. So I didn't really build it as a race car and I didn't really build it as like your average street car. I wanted a sleeper, something like a Fairmont that doesn't look like much. I even left the AAA sticker on the back bumper. <laughs> nice. You know, I just wanted something that you wouldn't expect to, to perform and it does. Yeah. And someday we, we need to run this car against the Fairmont to find out Definitely. where it is. But the reason why I'm here at the Ford Nationals is because that car is actually featured in the 40 Years of Fox Body exhibit here in 2019 at the Ford Nationals, which I'm kind of proud of. It was also featured in Hot Rod Magazine February 2019. Amazing. So for my first build to get such accolades and things like that, I think it's really cool. I don't know if it had anything to do with my YouTube channel or what, but the people that see the car really like the car, and I'm proud of that fact that, you know, people identify it, they like it, they stick around, they look at it. I mean, if it's parked next to, like, a really pretty car, they will gravitate towards my car. It's weird. Yeah, well, they, we saw that even in front yeah. of the Indy Museum yeah. where he had his hood popped and everyone was, you know, checking it out and like, wow, this is totally different. And, right and out of the ordinary and so it, it definitely stands out despite it you know being such a sleeper vehicle and that's that's amazing about it one of the reasons i chose the ford fairmont is because it was a fox body and because there are so many parts that are quote unquote cheap and readily available like all the parts that i just mentioned that i put on this car are mustang parts mainly for maximum motorsports so. yeah so it's the best of both worlds you yeah. have the huge parts you know base if you need it but then you have all the uniqueness of not being a mustang well uh, yeah exactly i've got a car i don't have a mustang right and there's nothing against Mustangs, because Mustangs are Mustangs, but I didn't yeah. want to build a Mustang. I wanted to be outside that box, yet I wanted Mustang performance. Yeah. Hence the reason. Fairmont Project. It's a very cool combo. So do you, did you do like a real legit like drag run yet for quarter mile times or anything like that? Embarrassingly, yes, but I haven't gotten a good one yet. In fact, I feel like I've just gotten the car together to the point where it's happy now. Yeah. I've already blown the engine up once, and I changed the turbo and everything. And, did some stuff to, to improve the car, including fuel injection, which honestly has, has made it a lot better. I started out with a carburetor. I really wanted to try that out. I wanted to see, you know, how to tune a carburetor for a turbo. Well, I came to find out that the best way to do it is to tune it for wide open throttle, but then everything else suffers with a carburetor. So it's not like you can make those fine tuning adjustments when you're sitting in traffic or anything like that, like fuel injection does. Yeah. So it was a nice upgrade. Uh, but overall, the car was, like I said, meant to be driven on the street fuel injection was kind of the logical choice, but for me it was the learning experience of, okay, how do I tune a carburetor for this? And it was expensive, because like I say, I blew the engine, ran it too clean. So, my bad. That's crazy. Live and learn. But yeah, so definitely check out his channel if you guys want to see, you know, he did a whole series on the Fairmont, and you can also uh, follow along. I'm sure he'll be doing updates and stuff, you know, throughout throughout the years of ownership and stuff, and he's currently uh, building a truck as well, which is going to be awesome once I that's that all too. completed. Yeah, so we won't <laughs> talk about that, because that one's fresh. It's but, fresh. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so definitely check him out. Here's the car. I'll link, uh, you know, the description below for his, uh, his channel there, and also up in the video cars. There's all kinds of ways you can link channels now, so I'll do all those, and uh, check his stuff out if it's sounds interesting to you it's it's very impressed that you build this stuff because you know obviously I'm used to just driving stuff that engineers just put together and it's just stuff people go out and buy and you can take our work it, but to have you know something you've actually built from the ground up I think just makes the connection to it so much stronger um, I think the enjoyment is probably so much stronger too and that's something I'll probably never experience because I and can't I can't turn a wrench to save my yeah. life but um, yeah when you spend that amount of money and time on something and you blow it up it's that's, very painful. Yeah, it's equally weird. painful it is, as it is joyful. So yeah. it's bittersweet. Yes, it is. But I love it. But to, also, don't forget to check out Matt Moran <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> of Matt Moran Motoring. Great yep. channel. And good news, you're already here. So, <laughs> so you're on the right track. You are awesome. <laughs> well done, you. <laughs> yep. But anyway, so uh, yeah, I mean, it's been a great day here cruising around. Um, you know, it wasn't quite as packed as I was expecting it to be as far as, you know, I was expecting long lines of bullets. Uh, and it was kind of a little more independent. People were going off and doing their own things, which is totally okay. But um, yeah, it just uh, it was cool. We went over a covered bridge and, you know, feel the little things and just kind of exploring this area was very cool too and something I wasn't expecting to do. We stopped at an old uh, train station and, you know, it was like a full on museum. Trains all, were cool. All kinds of stuff. Yeah. Trains are pretty, pretty insane as well for Lancaster, time. Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Is yeah, the place Lancaster. There's the Strasburg, Strasburg Railroad, yeah. and yeah, all that stuff. It's very, very interesting. 
uh, if it's not too far from you, it's definitely worth a day trip or something. But anyway, yeah, so thank you guys very much for watching this video. Let me know your thoughts on everything in the comments below. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Take care.